is the worst over? It's a question I'm sure that you're being asked increasingly. Can we confidently say that the worst of the pandemic is over? I hope so. I can't say so with a great deal of confidence. It really depends on how we continue to respond. There has been a problem with leadership globally in addressing this. There have been people who have misspoken, who have led us to false panaceas, drugs that don't work, are potentially toxic. We have not shared vaccines as widely as we should. And the best route out of this is, in fact, vaccination. And I will say this. India is the largest, has the largest vaccine manufacturer in the world. The Serum Institute of Pune is poised to lead here. And I think this is something that India should be proud of and should acknowledge and should promote. But Dr. Lipkin, when you say that you're not sure whether the worst is over, what is it that you now fear? Could there be, you know, 2021 was seen to be the year of the variants. 2020 was the year of the virus. 2021, we've had variants. We have four at the moment, alpha, beta, delta, which troubles large parts of the world, and gamma. Do you see more variants? Is that the fear? Do you believe that we should all continue, therefore, to mask up and be very careful when we go out? So you've asked several questions. Let me take them one at a time. The first is, will we see more variants? Yes, there are variants already circulating that don't have names. Will they be more capable of transmission? We don't know. Delta seems to be extraordinarily well adapted to spread in humans. It is somewhere between 100 and 1,000 fold more likely to spread than some of the earliest variants that we saw. But there's another form of COVID that people don't talk about yet, which I think is going to be extraordinary in terms of its impact. And that is what we refer to as long COVID. There are a number of other ways to describe it. So these are not people who necessarily have severe acute disease. They may have only mild disease, but they remain permanently or at least for a long period of time crippled with cognitive dysfunction, shortness of breath, fatigue. This can represent as many as 30% of people who become infected. And these individuals, even if the virus were to magically disappear, might continue to be infected and have a huge impact on their lives and on culture for decades to come. So it's a very complicated picture. We have to think about the acute disease and the importance of preventing future pandemics. We also need to think about what it is we're going to do for these people who've experienced COVID and who are likely to be ill for several months or years to come.